All right, man. So y'all know it's only one Cleveland, which means there's only one gutter guard company that you need, and that company is Leaf Filter. Uh, here's what it is, man. The gutter company is one of the best up and rising company in the city of Cleveland. An investment in Leaf Filter is an investment engineer to protect your whole home. It's your permanent solution to clog to clog gutters. Every installation comes with a lifetime no clogs guarantee. Schedule your free inspection now for a limited time. Get up to 32% off your entire qualified purchases and two free Browns jerseys at leaffilter.com slash UCSS. That's a free inspection up to 32% off and two free Browns jerseys with qualified purchases at leaffilter.com slash UCSS. Offer valid on first, uh, first come, first serve basis. While supplies last, full terms and conditions can be found at leaffilter.com slash UCSS. See representatives for warranty details. There we go. Mm. So who who is it, Earl? So, so for me, it's, it's Gavin Williams. I thought, wow. like, you know, Gavin is Gavin is a dude to me that I think he's pitched well against Detroit throughout his career. He pitched well against them this season. Right. And I kind of felt like, you know, he's, he's a dude that if he gives up the home run early, you can easily go to the bullpen, but Gavin is damn so good enough to get you six or seven strikeouts and at least get you four and a half, four innings, maybe five, even in the playoff game. It just depends. There's some logic in that. Yeah, sure. absolutely. It's not an illogical uh, point. Yeah, especially because the preference. Their most dangerous hitter in the postseason has been Kerry Carpenter. He's, he's a lefty, but, but he may not be able to play. Yeah, yeah I don't. I'm think assuming he's he hurt. It looked like a hamstring. It looked like a hamstring to me too, yeah. and I can tell you, and, and I know you know this too. They don't heal in two days. No, 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 no. That's that's a couple weeks. I, yeah. I wouldn't mind Gavin Williams for one thing. Even if you allow some runs, right, or le- base runners, at least you. I like the guy on the mound that has overpowering stuff where you can say he might strike the next two guys out. Now, if he if he's in there and he doesn't give up, if he all he has to do is not give up home runs. Walks can hurt you, but you know if he doesn't give up home runs, I like the fact that they have not seen him in this series. He throws really hard. He has good stuff, and he's going to have a short leash just like the rest of them. Yeah. So I like the, the fact that you could possibly strike out the side or strike out the next couple of guys if a runner gets on through blue paint hits or or walks. The there's a lot. There are good reasons to start Gavin. I Williams. like the overpowering fact. Uh, too. Yes. The thing that makes me nervous about Gavin Williams is a he hasn't pitched particularly well. I know. And b I don't like, like Alex Cobb, yeah, he hadn't pitched in a while, but he's a veteran. Sure. Gavin Williams is a young pitcher who hasn't pitched in two weeks. And I, I'm just worried. And he's he's a guy that can get overamped, and all of a sudden he's throwing everything high. And, like, that can get away from you in a hurry. I, we, the point that the Tigers haven't seen him, Earl is right. He's actually pitched well against the Tigers. And I like the fact they haven't seen him in this series. Yeah, right. So, I. Listen, I don't think there's a bad choice between the two. I would go with Boyd, but I don't think Gavin Williams would be uh, a bad choice. This, if they did this it. decision, Bull, reminds me of the decision Mike Hargrove had to make before Game Seven of the 1999 or 1997 World Series. He had the young Jared Wright, Jared Wright, <laughs> yeah. who had pitched him. so well okay, during the right, season. Right, but but it, this, there's no bigger stage in my view. You could say a Super Bowl, but for me. And my what I like, yeah. there's no bigger stage in sports than Game 7 of a World Series. Um, he's got Jarrett Wright, and mm-hmm. he's got Chuck Nagy. And Charles Nagy had a great year that year. Yeah, he did. And Nagy was the veteran, and Wright was, I think, 21 years old. Mm-hmm. He was a kid. And Hargrove made the decision to go with Jarrett Wright. And when the decision was being discussed, one of the things that was brought up was, look, we're likely going to see both. You know, when Wright gets into trouble, mm-hmm. we're going to see Chuck out of the pen. And he was told, prepare like you're starting, mentally. Now, it, the way it worked out, he pitched his tail off. He, 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 he was great. Him. Um, it was Mesa that blew the save. And then when Nagy did come in to pitch in extra innings, he was dinged for the game-winning run. Mm-hmm. So, is there a right-wrong when it comes? It's kind of like rest versus rust. For every time you show me that rest is worse than rust, I'll show you the flip. Yeah, sure. And and the same can be said for the veteran over the newcomer. Yeah. Um, I think you prepare to pitch both, and you tell both of them, this is a start for you. Yeah. Gavin, I'm going to start Matthew, but in all likelihood, even if he's dealing, I'll probably get him out after one 
plus trips through the lineup, depending on how he's going. Mm-hmm. If he's giving up one hit and he looks great, he's going to get a second time through. Mm-hmm. If he's not giving up a run, but he's giving up four hits and he's pitched out of trouble, he's not going to get to see the lineup the second time. So, yeah. Gavin, you're on the hook. So, get both of them ready to go. It's certainly not a bad idea. No, yeah. And I, I'm not going to scream at my television. Or I'm going to be at the game. I'm not going to yeah. scream next door to vote if he goes with Gavin Williams. We'll see how it goes. Yeah. We'll see what he's going to do. But I feel comfortable either way. Yeah, I do too. I, I'm a little more comfortable with Boyd right now. But I, I love Gavin Williams. I love the talent. And he's certainly more talented than Matthew Boyd. So, it's going to be a tough choice. The uh, Tigers are dealing with another injury too. Apparently, Jake Rogers is having an MRI. I don't know what he did. I don't either. I but didn't... Uh, uh, Zach told me this morning that Jake Rogers is supposed to have an MRI as was well. Was there a? Uh, I don't remember even an incident where I he was don't, injured. I don't. I didn't. I don't know what happened. I, I for some reason didn't ask. Who uh, got hit with the back foot slider? Do we remember? I don't think that was him. I, I don't think it was either. I can't. It was with two strikes. Also, it was by Gaddis. Gaddis hit. Was it Gaddis? Yeah, Gaddis hit him with a yeah. back foot slider. Yeah. Uh, on the, I barely clipped. I don't him, know. But he got him. I don't know. I don't know yeah. what the MRI would remember, be for, but. but a couple I, I, things. Jerry so Carpenter being the Tigers out hasn't seen Gavin huge. Williams since July 30th, right? So he was one and one with a 1.65 ERA and 22 strikeouts in each appearance this year. He pitched at least five innings, had at least five strikeouts, including eight the last time he went against Detroit. So he threw. Wow. Okay, yeah. those are good numbers, Bull. Those Very are really good. Yeah. Numbers. Now that was a different Tiger team in July, obviously. It was. But, uh, it and was. I like the fact that when you're a younger player. If you see early success, you know how jacked up he's going to be. Like that, that, that confidence of seeing you, you get through a couple yeah. of times in the inning yeah. gives young guys that adrenaline rush. Like, oh, oh, this is what it, this is, this is what postseason baseball is talking about. So I wouldn't mind that, but I feel comfortable and confident either way because it seems like you got all of your guys that are working their way back in Fry, you, you, Thomas. You, you look at uh, Jose. And, and Quan setting the table. Yeah. Rokio's even have a great at-bats. But, I feel good about the, uh, the option of getting three to four runs. If you get, if you get three, three, four runs and you get them early, I think, I think you can get the Tigers out of here. I, I, I do, it. too. I think they're going to really start pressing at the plate yeah. if they're down three or four runs. Yeah. That's when their experience yeah, I mean, will start to we'll Yeah, start sure, to sure, sure. Let me ask you guys this yeah. question. Um, I, I know that the bullpens are the strength of these pitching staffs. Yeah. But I thought Brian Anderson was making a, an astute point last night when he kept saying, maybe we're starting to see the fatigue of these bullpens. I mean, do you certainly. Do think that's the case? Yeah, I mean, certainly. I do. But guys have, that are normally perfect are been, have been getting Yeah, hit. I mean, all three of their top guys, you know, none, none of them looked as good as they normally have looked this season. Right, right. Right? They were good, but they weren't they, – none of them looked super, you know, outstanding yesterday. Right. But what choice do you have? I mean, you just don't have pitchers that they trust going deep in the I, game. And some of them, it's not like – like like I said, the guy who, who, who wrote the double down the line, I mean, he's throwing above the letters. It's 101 miles an hour. And who – if you turn on 101 miles an hour – He just hour, guessed right. It, he yeah. right. you, you shake his hand and say, if he, congratulations. If he throws a slider there, he it, it, obviously it, looks ridiculous. Obviously, But right? he started his swing. He, he said, and sometimes when a guy throws overpowering stuff, and that's different for every hitter, if overpowering for me is 95, then if the pitcher ratchets it up to 96 or 97, I'm in guess mode. Yeah, you guess it. In this case, with a guy who can throw 104, you're in guess mode, and you're saying, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to take a shot in the dark that he's going to throw a fastball here, and I'll adjust – you know, I'll adjust yeah. down if it's a slider. But he guessed right. He yeah. caught it. That's why he pulled it. You're not yeah. pulling that if you're reacting no. to it. No, I he, remember uh, whoever the first batter Classe faced yesterday. I can't remember who it was. It was right before Sweeney. Might have been Colt Keith. And the first pitch Classe threw was like 101 or whatever it was. And mm-hmm. you saw a look in his face like, oof. Yeah. yeah. This is different. Yeah, it wasn't. You know, yeah. like. He, 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 and he, I think he got up to 102. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, and, he has thrown up to 104 this year. The difference, too, is. 95, when you're standing right behind home plate, looks like it's unhittable. Yeah, right. But everybody's doing that now. Yeah, right, right, right. But, and I said this after the 2016 World Series, when they brought Chapman in to warm up in Game 7, I was looking at his warm-up pitches, yeah. and I turned the guy I was standing next to, and I said, that looks like CGI. Yeah, right, right. That, that doesn't look, it looks humanly the, impossible that ball, to catch up to that. It's, it, it, when, it, when you hear the mitt, 
It sounds oh. like somebody is getting shot. It with sounds like, sp- yeah. Pow! I'm like. Jay, and, Jay and, and Bull, I got a question before we bring Bernie out. So I've watched every game of this series, and maybe I'm just kind of being this panicking fan right now. But the last two games, I'm not seeing people score runs off Emmanuel Classe, let alone get a hit off Emmanuel Classe. Now, granted, he got out of that, got, got the save and things Wait, like no, that. Wait, no, I'm not. I'm seeing something completely different. I'm seeing guys that are hitting him. Okay, so I'm, I'm not out of line in saying yeah, that. It's making no. me a little nervous. Oh, I thought you he said meant during the regular season. Yeah, yeah. They're, they're, they're getting hits off of oh, him. Oh, no, they're hitting him. And it's bothering me. Yeah. He gave up five hits. Well, four hits. The yeah, con yeah. catch took away what would have been another one. Right, right, right. Um, it was hit well enough to be a hit. When does when does he ever give no, up five no. hits? Now he was obviously better yesterday than he was the time before. I, but I thought he but was he, too. He, he doesn't look he doesn't, he doesn't look, look at the peak of his powers. He, right he doesn't now. look to to be unhittable. Right. Look, and look. that's and the Tigers are you know we're talking about things that we can hold on to. Right, they're locked in. They're, what they're holding on to is hey, if it's a one run game and Klasse's on. It's not over. We've proven that. Right. And let's face it, if we're honest with mm-hmm. ourselves, I mean, the Tigers probably, at least on paper, have the worst lineup of any lineup we're going to face. God, you would, you know. I think you're right. You know, so uh, they, those guys are going to have to pitch better if, if yeah. they're going to go on this run we want. But one, one game at a time right now, you got to get this game. It's going to be fascinating to see who they start, what the bullpen choices are, you know, even with a day off, how, you know, how much are they able to use? Especially Cade Smith because he pitched a lot of pitches. Yeah, and, and, and he Gattis. looked fatigued. Yes, and night. Gaddis threw a lot so, of pitches. Gaddis did a great job in that second inning. He clutch, did, yeah. very clutch. Um, we're going to ask one question while we bring Bernie in, and then we're going to yeah. turn the page to Browns and, and the Eagles. A pitcher has a, a, a manager has a plan for a pitcher before the game. Sure. And it, not that he always sticks to it, but I'm sure AJ Hinch is building a framework for what he wants out of Tarek Skubal. Usually you put a ceiling to it, seven innings, five innings. What is your ceiling on Tarek Skubal? Because yes, this is an all hands on deck, got to win or you go home, but you also have to take into consideration, and that's why I hope it is a close, low scoring game. He'll have to do this calculus. At some point, he's going to have to make the difficult decision that I'm going to need him in my next series if we're going to have any chance, so I can't ride him like I might in a game seven of a World Series. I, I, yeah, I get what you're saying. I still, I mean, it would be hard for me to take him out of the game, period. If he's his his typical self. Right. I mean, he threw 90-something pitches last game. I'd let him go to 110. got through seven. I'd let him go to 110. Oh, really? I would if I were So you're an all-in A hundred percent. Okay, that's interesting. A hundred percent. I got to do it. And then, you know, he'll have his five-day, you know, he'll pitch. Well, he wouldn't be able to pitch till game three of the next round. No, but, yeah, he's he's. But you know what? In theory, if they get there, let's hope that doesn't happen. He could pitch game three, and then he'd be ready for game seven. So he could. That wouldn't be the yeah, worst. Yeah, he could. But. The one thing that I'll say as we wrap yeah. this up, um, I think game five will come down to how many outs Detroit's bullpen is forced to get. Yeah. If 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 Scooby goes seven again, and when he leaves the field, the game is in the balance. We got six outs against their bullpen. I don't love that. Yeah. I want to see him out after five. Yeah. Give us 12 outs against that Tiger right. bullpen, and we are going to come right, through. Right, because their their bullpen's not as deep, but I can't imagine they're going to knock him out after five. They knock I, him out at five. I can't either. That, it was big that they scored off Brisky because he hadn't given up a base runner in the postseason. He's been perfect. And Fry hit that home run off him because him and Vest have been particularly good for so, them. So, to my original point, yeah. I think it's going to come down to how many outs you force the bullpen to get. Yeah. This is my approach. Patience. Patience. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Scooble throws a lot of pitches that start out as strikes that end up out of the zone. Spit on them. Get that pitch count up early. Now, if he's just You know better than zone, anybody, that's hard to do, though. I, well, listen, Very yeah. I, I yeah. wish I could practice what I preach yeah, because yeah. that's my approach. A lot of times yeah, yeah, I'll yeah. see a guy he's throwing junk, nothing's ending in yeah. the zone, and I get up there and sawdust is coming out of the yeah, bottom yeah, of my yeah. bat. I understand that. But they've... they've they have it in their DNA to be patient at the plate. Yeah. This game, more than any other, might be the one where they need to exercise that. Because, now look, if he's pounding the zone and pitches are finishing in the strike zone, yeah. then change your plan, and, yeah, and right, you'll right, know right. that after one or two innings, and then start to become aggressive. But you've got to spit on pitches that are ending up out of the zone, get yeah. the strike count high, foul off a lot of pitches, you know, ha- yeah, don't work. have one, two, three innings. No, you got to have. do it. You got to so, make so him throw. You're, so you're talking to Josh Naylor. <laughs> oh, my. I, I, I'll say this in closing. Josh needs to stop <laughs> pretending that he's playing beer league softball. Yeah. Right now, the Naylor brothers can't hit to save their lives. No, I know And Jimenez, can't. he First can't hit pay, either. But, but with Josh, it's simple. 
his helmet falls off on every swing. <laughs> yeah, I know. Josh, Josh. <laughs> I would. It, this is what I would do if I'm Stephen yeah. Vogt. See, this, I shouldn't even say that. I know, I know. You open up a can of worms. Bernie, yeah. hold on, bro. Yeah. Here's what I would do if I'm Stephen Vogt. Yeah, uh, Josh, come on in my office. <laughs> Shut the door behind you. Here's what we're going to do. If you hit a home run, we're finding you $50,000 in Kangaroo Court. You understand me? This, you need to play this. You want to play like it's softball? Okay. Here's how we're going to do it. A lot of times in Texas shootout softball, you only hit three or five home runs in an inning, and then if you hit another one, it's an out. Yeah. Because some of these guys, every guy in the lineup, boom, 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 boom. Yeah, right. I need you to pretend like you're playing softball, but we've already got five home runs. We're at the limit, and if you hit it over the fence, it's an out. (laughs) And the reason I say that is because change your approach. Yeah. Just Hit the ball. Spe- home runs will happen. Especially you're, you're with two home. strikes, Jay. With two, he with two strikes, he's yeah. out of his tree. With, with two swings. strikes, he swings. He, it's crazy, his swings. Oh, my God. Yeah. I need some I mean, medicine. you got to cut it down. All right, we got we got to do the read so we can get burned. Yeah, we do. And one so last, my heart rate will come down. One last thing for me. <laughs> G started this series off talking about Jose Ramirez because he's the best player. He's got to show up in big right. moments. This is game five, winner take <laughs> all. Uh, he was 9-21 in a regular season for his career versus Scuba with a 429 average. Wow. Of course, game two, nice. 0 for 3 with the two strikeouts. I'm looking for Jose to have a big game. And by the way, both strikeouts, he chased pitches that were out of the zone. Yeah, yeah. Wildly out of the zone. Yeah. Low facts. sliders, one of them hit go. the dirt. I think big that facts. home run gets him going and he, and He's he has back. a good game five. He's yeah. back. He, now the monkey's off his back. Yep. He has a huge game five. Let's go, Cards! Let's go. 